Hi, it's Mabi, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit of the glory of the sun today. There we are. So it's absolutely amazing. We're due to have rain tomorrow. So I came and had lunch outside and just wanted to share just that amazing solar energy, life force light yes so ah. how are you doing mm -hmm. how are you doing I know that um, well I read that the World Health Organization at last had made a statement saying only the people who had a cold or a cough or maybe a fever needed to wear the masks. So that's a start because right now what's rolling out is um, I'm sorry about the sound is a little uh, plane just somebody having fun while the weather is good enjoying themselves flying um, yes so it's it's become quite mandatory in France um, you know every shop has it written and however um, and a lot of people have really got extremely strong reaction if you walk in without a mask when you are not feeling ill because as the story has been running for the last year and a bit you could be a um, silent carrier so what are we carrying really because we have been carrying those for thousands and thousands of years that's part of life and today I feel quite sad because what's happened is the greatest achievement on planet Earth is humanity now is afraid of living on planet Earth. Yes, that's quite a big one, isn't it? Living on planet Earth with what is invisible. So rather than create more spaciousness within ourselves to welcome, oh, I'm not feeling good today, or oh, I've got a fever, okay, then my body is doing a clearing. That's how my dad used to say. That's good news. It means your body is kicking in a fever, which means you're healthy, and it's going to be doing its own battle. So you become well again. So the fever is the body shifts the temperature, the heat. And the heat is about killing whoever is invading the body. That's very wise, isn't it? However, if we start being in conflict with the external world like there is something out there that's terrifying me because many people have maybe died from what is outside me but let's not just believe 100% in the numbers that are rolling out because the studies will reveal within the next six months I feel that all was not as it was offered on media coverage. So what I'm inviting each one of you to do is just how would it be if instead of looking at it as I am now in a war or in conflict with the whatever 
uh, happened last October, which is totally normal in every autumn, when the lungs start picking up, you know, it's a change. Chinese medicine, they speak about the need in autumn to boost the lung meridian. Now there is a reason for that. And right now in February, we are again in the lung meridian. So a lot of people often leave this planet Earth at the transition change like autumn, winter, or February, March, just as the spring starts kicking in. That's totally normal. This has been always like that for thousands and thousands of years. My concern right now is how we suddenly find ourselves in a conflicting situation with our own bodies. That really concerns me because if we are at war those who wear masks, those who don't wear masks. Uh, as we know that unless you're going to wear the mask like they do in the surgical room, the mask is worth nothing because the germs can go all around and the germs get transmitted through our hands. Hello, my friend. There is a beautiful, beautiful buzzard right above. So it might be my beautiful living joy. It's been the second time today. So I'm really touched. So, yes, so I wonder if we could just create a little bit of spaciousness. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I'm taking a lot of sun. <coughs> and I've just had some ginger. <laughs> I had a couple of ginger after my lunch. So the ginger is always heat and it's kicking whatever dampness might be in my lungs. So it's about taking real good care of yourself as you're going through the changes. So what I feel is let's welcome, instead of going with conflict, oh, let's just breathe in and see how do I feel? Let's just create spaciousness. And where is that in me? How much room have I given in me around the notion of I'm at war with both pathogens which are part of life, you know. Um, that's quite something because when we are at war or we are in conflicting situation, we contract. And when we contract, our immune system gets depleted. And when we contract and our immune system gets activated, we release cortisols. And we release um, oh, adrenaline. So if we keep going on with releasing cortisol and adrenaline when we are moving into chronic fear, that means we're going to start going into depression, okay? We go into our parasympathetic system, we shut down. And instead of being able to hear each other, I hear you're afraid, okay. I hear you're afraid of what is invisible, for whatever reason. Maybe in childhood or through your parents, something was invisible and you felt unsafe. So may I invite you just to go deeper within yourself, create spaciousness and welcome that place where you feel a little bit afraid. And before you do that, check out with your breath, where is it that I feel resourced in myself? Where is it that I feel warmth and that I feel there is a little bit more spaciousness within myself? So if you don't find anything, the best 
the best tool is, the best resource is the breath. So you take a deep breath in and follow the out breath. Now when Living Joy came in my life, he was four or five days old, very wounded. The way I dealt with Living Joy was not with fear. I didn't go with the fear of the blood. I didn't go with the fear of his big being broken. I didn't even go with thought forms because thought forms of, oh my God, he's never going to be able to eat because that would have been projecting a shadow. I would have put that onto that little being. So what I did, I opened my heart and I really tended this little being. I fed it water and honey and a little bit of a rescue remedy and made a hot water bottle, which I put under blankets in a little basket and I checked on him every two hours, in the night and in the day, making sure it was hydrated. So right now, what I can invite you to do is can you please make sure you're hydrating? Hydrating with water, not just tea. Tea goes into the digestive system, water goes into it your bloodstream and kidneys. It's very different. So hydrating is very important. I'm not talking here of um, Coca-Cola with aspart aspartame, which is highly toxic and sugar. I'm talking here about really water. And if that's difficult, just start with a little bit of lemon, squeeze a bit of lemon juice. And take that every two hours or every hour and little by little start building a kind of relationship with water because water is going to really support you at this time. Okay. So that's what I wanted to share today, how to move away from what I experience as a conflicting situation, even maybe a friend who doesn't believe, you know, who believes maybe differently from what you believe, that's what might be going on. Don't separate, don't divide, don't create a conflict. Step in the shoes of your friend and try and see how does it feel just stepping in the shoes of my friend, just for a little while. And if it isn't my friend, just step in the shoes of that person who just made a comment that really activated something in you. So two days ago, I did a video on sheep and how the sheep have the wisdom of lying on the earth, maybe every hour or two hours, and they need to stop and chew what they have taken in. That's very interesting, isn't it? So they don't just keep on eating. And the cows do the same. Almost every mammal does the same. And we are the same. So it's like allowing, hello little spider, allowing ourselves to stop and see what is the information of the food it's food, information is food. I've just listened to or I've just heard. And can I find ways of rechecking that information? Not on social media, but maybe if I know someone who lives in that country. So I get a different information. Okay, there's a tremendous amount of information right now that's being censored. So that's interesting. Why would humanity be censored when we are born with the freedom of will? It means the freedom to choose. To choose what information I want to keep, what information I want to listen to, 
and what information I wish to share with you today. So today I wanted to share the information of let's take time not only to assimilate and digest the information, which is we are informing our physical, emotional and mental body, so we can start feeling safe, calm, and then we can start feeling, hmm, how do I feel in my heart? And connect with Mother Nature. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting in the sun talking with you, connecting with Mother Nature, listening to the sounds. I can hear there are some planes, and we've had a lot of cold weather. We even had snow, and right now it looks like spring is starting to come. I've noticed bees are starting to come on the calendula flowers, and. Um, I pruned the rose bushes the other day, so I might do an hour of that. And I'm going to be running a workshop on Saturday for a small group. So it's how to replenish that life force. Because we are beings of light. And we are within matter as well. It's fascinating, isn't it? So we tend to over-identify with the body, or our emotions, or our mental thoughts. But the three belong to one. And when we are within the one, then we can start connecting with our soul. And that's very beautiful and profound. Because the soul has to do as well with the opening of the heart. So I'm going to leave you with those thoughts to ponder upon and just inviting you check out can you create a little bit more spaciousness <coughs> when you meet a conflict or a conflicting situation a conflict in someone saying something instead of reacting just stop take a deep breath start feeling how does that feel within me and start feeling the other person too like I feel you, as you say that, and I feel you feeling me, who may have a reaction. So how would it be if I just reset that, and instead of going with reaction, I just feel and instead of putting thought forms, just receive, create a little bit of spaciousness within me, and say, oh, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Just, I hear what you're saying. And just saying that will create a little bit of spaciousness. Just a little bit. That's all that's needed. So I'm going to sorry. So I'm just going to show you how my beautiful shallots are growing. The peas. And I did plant a tremendous amount of peas which I have to put in the ground next week. I had planted peas for living joy. So I was already thinking of this beautiful being who loved peace and now this beautiful being is no longer there but I still have grown I've got a whole bag of peas <laughs> so I'm going to have to grow more peas and I just wanted to share the calendula no 
there's a few flowers of calendula over there. There we are. So it's Mabi from the Source Center. And blessed you be as you start this little piece of homework of how to be different, how to create spaciousness rather than go with reaction. That's quite something, isn't it? And that's when we go with the heart. So I invite you to stay with that. Take good care of yourselves. And blessed you be. <laughs>